I guess it's been a decade. Draft Day 1998, you've been part of the, one of the best defenses in college football history. The Panthers, your 14th overall. What stands out most to you from that day? From being drafted? Yeah. Well, just the excitement. I mean, I felt like all of the hard work that I had put in here at Nebraska had finally paid off. And uh, I was going to enter into this new phase of my life that uh, growing up as a kid in New Jersey was a dream. I mean, to play in the NFL, it's almost uh, not realistic to think that one day you'll be playing with the, the best people in the, in the world. So you were. You were living your dream, making it in the NFL. At what point did you realize that your life was taking a different turn, a turn for the worst? Well, I think my time down in Carolina was like nothing I had ever experienced before, uh, just in terms of the injuries. Uh, I had never really been injured here at Nebraska, never to the point where I needed surgery. Uh, but when I got down to Carolina, it just seemed like my body started falling apart. And uh, I, would, I would take the pills for legitimate reasons, but then I would take them for just pure joy. Um, I liked the way they made me feel. So I was always justifying it, certainly, with, with all of the injuries that I had. But the abuse certainly took place when, when I was down there in Carolina. That's really where it began then. And unfortunately, when you talk to any addict, they have a rock bottom moment. What was yours? Well, uh, I don't know. It, it seemed like I always would find a new rock bottom. But a year and a half after I played my last snap for Carolina, I was in my parents' house and attempting suicide. What happened? Why, why didn't you go through with it? I was angry at the way that my career went. I was depressed. I expected myself to, to play for 10, 12 years, to go into the Hall of Fame, to be a, a Pro Bowl type guy year in, year out. And, and it didn't go that way. And, and look, at I mean, I put a lot of blame on myself, but the injuries played a, a toll as well. And, and I just didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. There was absolutely no hope. Uh, I didn't think that there was a, a purpose for me on this earth and, and I just, it, when you're going through this, you just think that everybody would be better off without you here. Uh, it, it's, it's hard for me now sometimes to talk about suicide because I almost get angry because now that I've, able, I've been able to kind of live through it and see the effect that it had on my family and my close friends, it's the most selfish act that one person can ever commit. Who or what saved you then, Jason? Well, I was fortunate. I mean, I came, come from a great family where, where everybody's intact, uh, two loving parents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, everybody. They just never turn their back on me. And, and I've crossed paths with people where their families have said, see you, don't come back for another three years until you've proven that you're clean. And, and my family just, they were always there. They were always picking me up. My brother showing up on my doorstep. Um, a younger brother picking me up when I'm convulsing on a bathroom floor. Uh, they just never turn their back on me. I think that's the thing that so many people don't know about addiction is how it affects everybody else and it affects their family. The pain that's involved with everybody, including yourself. So, so why write a book? How difficult was that to go back and rehash all of this? Well, I thought given my playing career and being an NFL guy, that it was sort of a, a platform uh, in order for me to, to talk about a topic that I think doesn't get maybe the attention that it should. I think there's a lot of people out there that are struggling. And if, if me telling my story is able to help somebody else, whether it's the addict themselves, whether it's a mother or a sister or a brother, somebody who is close to somebody who's going through this. Uh, it, this just wasn't the book for me. I mean, you can go back a few years, and I did those HBO Real Sport episodes where I was talking about my addiction, and I did every radio show that would have me on. I think it's just a topic that needs more attention. So if somebody doesn't have to go through the miserable parts of, of their life similar to, to what I went through, then it's all worth it. I'm sure you've heard this story with Josh Hamilton of the Texas Rangers, who's overcome yeah. his addiction as well, and he's, he's still playing. It's an, it's an amazing thing he's doing. It's amazing what you have done. Um, the book, by the way, I don't think I said the title. It's called Jason Peter, Hero of the Underground. I understand it's doing very well so far, right, Jason? 
It is. After 12 days on the shelves, we hit number 24 on the New York wow. Times bestseller list. So uh, I'm excited. Um, as long as this book, I mean, the, the ultimate goal here is, is for it to help people. Um, but obviously with uh, more people talking about it and, and I, from the feedback that I've gotten, people have really enjoyed it and, and they think that it's going to help people. And, and so far, the response from, from people, whether it's a struggling addict or whether it's a mother, uh, has been really positive.